Okay, this is a video of how I got around the problem that you get after you take off of the uh, take the governor off of a 301 Predator. Uh, there are plenty of other videos out there showing either a GX 270 or other ones that are the big block Predators. This is a 301. And over here, you can see that's the governor once it's been removed and next to it is the oil level sensor which I also removed and ironically removing that frees up more space to put more oil in it uh, the reason I didn't want to have that in there is because I'm going I'm very diligent about checking the oil level and also because this is going to be on a mud motor which is on a gimbal which will be constantly being uh, side to side turn side to side and up and back so I didn't want the motor cutting out for that reason uh, currently I haven't I've only run this motor for two hours so it still has the uh, stock exhaust on it I have all of the stuff to hop this up including that velocity stack right there the reason I have that on is to keep the carburetor on tightly while I sorted out my throttle linkage issue that I was having. Once you remove the the governor you can see right there uh, I've capped it with a bolt and loctited it in place. Uh, originally you had the, the governor was on a long linkage that was over here connected by a spring that went from here over to this side of the throttle. Now I wanted to reuse this throttle because I like the idea of having this adjustable screw here where I can regulate how high the engine revs just by using this screw. I don't want to rely on a governor of sorts. So because also because this is going on a mud motor, this is originally this is eventually it's going to have a um, a shaft coming off here that I don't want to constantly be taking on and off. It was, it's too inconvenient and I wanted to get the governor removal out of the way before I did that. Now the reason that I haven't hopped this up yet is because like I said before it only has two hours on this engine and I'm going to put the original right there the original air filter back on this until I run it for the first time for about the first 20 hours of use. That's the run-in. It's an additional part of break-in. I've already done the two-hour break-in and I drain the oil out and put fresh conventional oil in it so I can continue breaking it in as stock. Um, as I said, I removed the governor and when you remove the governor there is a an L-shaped, roughly L-shaped, uh, pivot gear here, or pivot uh, arm and what that does is it's on this part right over here this part right here comes out and that this the part with the screw on there you can see I actually cut the original the original um, pivoting arm there into four pieces this is one of the one of the pieces because I was originally I was had up in the air I was going to use this piece here for my pivot but I didn't have a way to really secure it on the bottom so I went with a 3 8 bolt but I did however recycle the rest of the pivot arm and I can point the pieces of it out here as we speak this was the center piece of the pivot arm it was connected to this piece right here which became my lower Part of, I made a, a I made this into a bracket and I spot welded it to the original throttle position bracketry as you can see right here. Now once I did that, I uh, I got a stainless steel bolt. It's three eighths. Let's see if you can see right here. I didn't do this while I was making it because it would be too too labor intensive but you can see I put the 3 8 bolt through the bracket that I made this the bracket is the center part of that former pivot arm and then 
right here is the other end of the pivot arm and this is the other end of the pivot arm and what I did was I took these pieces that I cut off the original pivot arm I welded them to a flat washer that's 3 8 through the center and then once I had all these parts made I got the spacing correct so that I could drill a hole in this know where I where I could drill the hole then I put the bolt through welded into place and then welded this part of the former bracket or former pivot arm that is now the base of the bracketry to the rest of the bracketry of the stock throttle linkage from there I put a a nut on all the way down to the part where it was no longer threaded then I put a nylon washer then my pivot arm that I made then another nylon washer and it's topped off with a nylon lock nut and that once that's in place it doesn't back off it doesn't move none of that and coming over here the modifications I made to the throttle body or the throttle linkage I cut here and here and bent this piece up then I drilled a hole through it here you can see that right there and I also moved this piece that was over here on top of there I moved it over here because my throttle cable is going to come around from the side out of from the back of the engine up over to here and go into the, the throttle nut right here I also cut the end off of there's what used to be the hand lever I cut that off more for space than anything else so I didn't have to worry about clearancing this throttle cable here this is actually the original throttle cable or throttle line as it came from way over here where the original linkage ended up from the governor so I had the once I had this in place then I could get the measurements where I could cut this down I kept this end the way it was I cut this end down because I only had to make a simple down bend on that then I put that in there this additional return spring here is the cut down spring that used to go inside this and take the slop out over here where it originally attached to that there's a small hole in here you can put that through and I drilled a small hole in both the stock piece and the aftermarket choke hold I put a small hole in there and put it in through there this keeps the tension to where the the throttle will be completely closed and also takes the slop out of the throttle okay then once I cut this piece there was enough where I could have used this piece here to go the, pro the original reason I did this is because the throttle opens in an a direction going this direction the throttle operates going this direction it has a pivot over here which changes the direction of the throttle arm linkage so what I did was I made this pivot here to replace the one that used to be on the governor and this linkage here going this direction as you can see as I demonstrate pulling it that way moves the throttle the proper way to open the throttle okay and basically um, I eliminate the problem of having to the only other way I could think of doing this would be to utilize this this fitting right here make an L-shaped bracket and run the throttle all the way around the back of the engine come over this way to pull as an, a pulling throttle this way using the cable to go directly to there and take the place of this rod or attaching it to this rod I didn't want to do that I wanted to bring it straight over here and utilize this stock linkage the reason I wanted to the main reason 
was because I want to utilize this detent screw as my governor. This will regulate how far the throttle opens so that I'm not over revving it until I have time to put a proper SFI flywheel on there. And this return spring works perfectly fine and this one takes up the slack. And I recycled most of the materials that I used. I had to buy, buy very little and it only required about three spot welds to do. So if you have a welder, you're well within your means to do this modification. If you don't have a welder, the other alternative would be to make an L-shaped bracket here and run the throttle this way over to here in order to open your throttle. But then you would have to attach a much more substantial return spring to this part of the throttle plate. This way I'm utilizing all of the stock linkages and I also have this to use at, to govern how fast the engine runs at, at the turn of a screw instead of relying on the governor that came in it. Also, after removing the governor, before I have a chance to put the flywheel on and as I'm running it as stock, I left the stock springs in here. Well, by doing that, leaving the stock soft springs in there, even if it does have, have a tendency to over rev, which it shouldn't, if it does, the soft springs will begin to float at high RPM and it acts as a secondary safety backup for not having the governor in there. Once I put a proper flywheel on there, then I'm going to change these springs out with slightly harder 18 pound springs that came with the hop up kit for this, which I got by from a place called NR. Uh, they do all kinds of stuff for small Honda engines, Predators, everything. Clones, you name it. Um, also, a good place to get stuff is old mini bike uh, warehouse. They, they also have a great selection of stuff. But the best selection I found is from that place called NR, NR Racing. They are outstanding. They, they have excellent customer service, and they seem to have the most complete hop-up kits available for this, these types of engines. Now, the 301 is different from the, the 212, and there's a lot more for the 212 than there is the 301. So I just wanted to make this quick video, even though it's gone 12 minutes now, um, just to explain how you can get around this problem of controlling the throttle properly and utilizing the stock throttle linkage uh, after you take the governor out. And uh, if you like it, give a like to the video, and hopefully I'll have more videos coming.